Hey y'all, I'm gonna be reacting to Back Arrow episode 12 and I'll be watching it from Funimation's website and I'll be starting my reaction from the 2 minutes and 22 second mark in 1, 0, go! Alright, I'm pumped up for this. It's too much pride a problem. It depends on the context, it could be. Depending on the scenario. I like how they're utilizing their defeat of Kai to actually rile up everyone's morale. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Makes sense. Considering they... Oh. And at least that explains why when they're blown up. In most cases, people will also die alongside the Bray Height, too. Maybe it's because Bakura doesn't have conviction? That's my guess. Could be something else entirely, though. Hmm. Oof, that can't be good. Aww. I mean, it kinda does, it make... And it also makes sense that giving names to attacks and makes them stronger too, considering everything's based off of conviction. I do like this, at least now it's gonna force Backer to actually use more of his smarts. I mean, hey, he might have no choice but to do that eventually. I'm assuming he ends up going against Zetsu, he's going to have no choice but to kill him. That's probably the only guy that he's going to have to go all out when it comes to the conviction of winning the fight. I mean, hey. That's a sound plan, but what if Rick already... That sounds like it's too easy. I'm pretty sure if, um, if that tactic was used against... But I'm assuming Rick might have some countermeasures against that, if that plan was already utilized in the past. I do like that where we've actually seen the political angle of war that ain't just, oh yeah, let's all be gung -ho about world. No, they've also got to show off the thoughts of the citizens at large too. I actually like Phoenix guttiness there. It actually... Be talking to a riled up crowd. Now, that's actually badass in its own way. I gotta admit, she's got the voice of figurative butter there. Okay, I actually like this. It shows you that Fina is more than just a pretty face and a pretty smile when she's not in her crazy Fenia form. Let's just hope she can live up to these uh, extremely high expectations though, because one thing is saying that and the other thing is actually living up to the hype. Uh, I think she's a bit rough on herself though. I mean, nothing could have predicted that she would have been dominated by Zetsu that quickly, that fast. Her movements are too predictable, that's probably your issue. He doesn't need to!
I mean, I guess I could see your argument. For that, considering the fact that if she might actually exercise a bit more caution her movements. Hey, Miss Prisby. Oh! Oh, man. It feels like you might actually find a way of taking advantage of that. Yeah, I was like, I thought she was gonna fall in the hard rock. I was like, is she gonna die? Talk about drop, I figured to fire her. Jeez. No, I think what he's trying to tell her is. Yeah, he's trying to get revenge to fuel her, and if she. Is fueled enough, she'll be able to get out of that binding. If she isn't, then she won't, and she's worthless. I think that's what Zetsu's trying to tell her and doing all that in a runabout way. Damn, she must have the teeth of a freaking lion to be able to endure that much strain because Ranger's is pretty damn pointy. Oh my goodness! I mean, I wouldn't blame him, but he's going to have no choice eventually. Oh, yeah, but Tony Khan is actually an athlete. I haven't really killed anyone yet. I mean... I mean, I wouldn't blame I mean, him. No, I mean, I do like that about Elisha at the very least. Hmm. And plus, she doesn't have the luxuries of thinking about keeping her enemies alive or dead. Aww. Yeah, but he's not done experimenting with the Bappers. I don't think he'd want to give Bit something that dangerous. That makes sense. <laughs> I like how it just completely wrecks that argument. Hmm. I don't think that's the case. Okay, that was being sarcastic. I like how it completely falls for it. Doesn't even. <laughs> But it does show you that she would be he's professional as a motivator, though. Able to, like, hit on someone's when it's just enough. To get them to do what they're supposed to do. Oh. Mm. Damn. Talk about the ferocity from the armies. I have a feeling that the trap's not gonna work. Considering that that trap was already used against Backer and the others. I mean, I hope for their sake it works. But you never know though. At least in Backer, things don't usually turn out the way our heroes want them to turn out. Okay, should Kai really be trying to fight when he's in less than optimal shape? I mean, he's a beast! Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I 
I know why she's doing this. Yeah! She has to try to make up for Bakura's injuries. But at the same time, though, she shouldn't be too thoroughly ambitious. I feel so bad for Elsha, where she always wants to participate, but she can't. Yo! He has a right to be looking down on him. He's that injured, though. You know, I have a feeling eventually... Oh! It's a coordinated attack. You may argue it's cheap, but they need to do what they need to survive. Yeah, but not much they can do about this. Damn! <laughs> He's up and even like they don't not even completely face him on anymore directly. Gee. Yeah. Should we be what? What a savage! At least Prax isn't majorly injured, though. On the positive side, yo. I mean, that's a good fear to have, though. Setsu so ain't no joke. I'm assuming they're gonna... Twitched one of his eyebrows. Oh, my! I'm actually surprised that she still has stand up a lot. I mean, I, I had a feeling she might have survived. Oh, okay, that's how she was able to survive. I do like this, though. She did that. That's he knows how to push people's buttons and... Sort of play with them psychologically so that they can also improve themselves. Although in this case, I guess you could say it's digression and someone constantly thinking about revenge. But y'all know what I mean. You know what I have a feeling? I have a feeling everything is going to go utterly wrong. Because Ren's probably going to come to the rescue and it's going to give Kai a lot more conviction. Oh boy! Villain? They're calling other- I mean, I guess I could see her perspective. Huh. I don't think she's wrong that one bit, though. Yeah. Okay, at least we're getting some character development with Kai when it comes to him now, in a way, acknowledging his own injuries. Whoa! Did he have to put it out that way? Yeah, he does deserve to get punched like that. Good! At least someone's finally calling out Kai on that. Oh!
<laughs> Yo! Finally getting that fight back! What's down? This area is done like. A... And you just did that casually too! Alongside use? <laughs> Jeez. My god, even though they're in the antagonist is freaking cool. Um, I think Bathgirl is gonna have no choice but to kill them. I mean, how in the world is he even gonna be able to fight against that? Without going full force. I mean, yes. Doctor always does go for us, but there's no way he's gonna be able to fight just with the intention of knocking out Kai and Ren. He's gonna have to go full force. I wonder if. Whoa, okay. Damn it, get it good! Hmm. And this is something I enjoy about the series, like you see psychological. Oh! And this is why I think back ever really, really fucked up. And damn, for a second, Shuibi looked different there. You looked a lot older and mature. <laughs> and the thing is, with the injuries, um... And you know something I like about this? Actually seeing two Brihai users actually unified together, especially from an antagonistic standpoint, I like it because we're finally seeing the antagonist do some of the similar things that Bakura does when he's combined his efforts with someone else. Yeah, I mean, there's no way Bakura's gonna be able to win. I mean, it's, oh. Hope his smile means that he's got another plan or something. Oh boy. A shame now that bait's not gonna work anymore. I do like the character the moment for Kai though. He's now taking back row completely seriously now. He ain't taking bait anymore. That's a phenomenal amount of character development in a singular episode. Well, yeah, I mean, he's a better bit of himself now. Oh. Yo, the <laughs> they told him not to. That is just absolutely reckless right there. And they warned him. They fucking warned him. I mean, I understand why he would attempt to utilize his main move, though, because... Honestly, 
Yeah. That's the only way they're going to be able to get out of it. Fine, for the most part. Him pushing himself to the limits, they're not going to be able to do it any other way. So I understand where Backyard was coming from, but damn. There is a moment where you kind of have to psychologically just keep yourself in check. And that's what I also love about this episode, too. Like, with it increasing the stakes and seeing a back arrow completely frightened and scared at the shock of his pre height not reacting the way he wants him to, I thought that scene was pretty frighteningly powerful. I was like, yo, this was intense. So that's all when it comes to this episode. I just gotta give the script absolute credit because, for one, aside from up in the stake scene, back in her own pain, and aside from it acknowledging the fact that, yeah, he's gonna have to kill someone in combat eventually, setting up back girl for a lot of uh, character exploration. I also love the fact that in this episode, oh wait, do the heavens cry when the princess rises? Yo, are we actually going to see Fina get in on some action? Because going by the preview, and what's going to happen to Bakiro's arm? I don't see bits of its hand. I wonder if it's going to blow up or something, or if he's going to sacrifice his arm. Yo, that'd be quite the... Um, that'd be pretty dicey next week if he actually sacrifices part of his arm just to take on Kai and Ren. Now... Another thing that I also like too about this episode, we're seeing narrative consequences towards Back Arrow sparing Guy and Ren. Because they would have just gone straight up for the kills. They wouldn't be dealing with this mess. So I do like that. We're getting to see consequences for Back Arrow's huge gamble. And on top of that, I love seeing Prax's PTSD when it comes to the possibility of, of Zetsu joining the battlefield. Actually seeing that terror in her face. I think it makes her into a much more grounded character in reality, and I love that amount of growth. And I love seeing, not just that, but I love seeing the fact that you see Ren much more determined with that she ain't gonna take shit face anymore, and she's so entwined with the revenge. You can see her massive amount of determination. I was like, yo! And I love the character development for Guy too, where he realizes that he should take every opponent seriously and not just should we be, because it's going to lower him down. So that's why I absolutely thought the episode was fantastic. It was beautifully written, seeing all these characters either gain more conviction or readjust it. I do also like the fact that it does make up an interesting little plot point here where you even got... Bit trying to ask about the Bind Rapper so that he can help participate in fights. That's also pretty damn nice. I was like, okay, this is nice. At least they're foreshadowing it so that when the moment that bit that it comes, if Bit does get a Bind Rapper, it's going to be a more monumentous. That's provided it does happen. And that's why I love the narrative decisions in this week's episode. And aside from all of that, the voice performances were great, great visuals, and that's why I feel the episode's worthy of a 9.25 out of 10, in my opinion. But, anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on the episode. I would love to hear your thoughts and how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comment section below. Hope y'all rate the video, share it, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later if you come back for more, because I'm excited to see what they're going to do next in the series. But, anyways, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye-bye.